Welcome to Metamorphosis on Working with Vendors. Working with a vendor is one of the most rewarding and at times challenging aspects of any digitization project. That's especially true for the National Digital Newspaper Program. Fostering a collegial and supportive relationship with your vendor is critical to successfully completing your deliverables on time. Since so much of the work relies on this third party, it is important to understand the roles and responsibilities of all parties involved. In other tutorials in this series, you learn the typical workflow for completing NDNP requirements. In this context, it's helpful to understand where the vendor is situated in the larger NDNP workflow picture. First, let's look at the ways metadata creation and quality review of that metadata can prepare the vendor for their work. Every awardee vendor relationship is unique. Some awardees rely on the vendor to capture and encode metadata at all levels, while some others place the metadata burden upon themselves. It really depends on the QR strategy an awardee chooses. Some choose to do full page by page collation, providing all metadata to their vendor ahead of time. Some awardees, due to resource limitations, may only be able to collect minimal metadata and rely on the vendor to collect the rest. The latter approach will yield a QR process that is heavily focused on finding mistakes in the digital files. Vendors are relied on for the page level metadata creation, whether they create it from scratch or follow your instructions. No matter the level of metadata you send, think about how your metadata will be received and translated by the vendor. Remain consistent with your approach. If your state decides to populate optional fields, or if there are unique exceptions to some of the standard fields, consider noting these exceptions in advance for the vendor's benefit. This type of documentation will allow the vendor to know in advance what to expect from a particular batch. It will also provide you with the documentation needed to check their work once they deliver the digital assets back to you. Some of the optional fields and metadata exceptions that you might encounter are page order, duplicate pages and issues, missing pages, issue data's label, section label, and addition order and label. After creating metadata, you should also review the content through the microfilm collation process. This will help to catch many easy to fix errors that will save the vendor time during production. This may also resolve any questions you initially had when creating the metadata. During this time, you should also ensure that no identifier collisions will occur once the material has been digitized. Identifier collisions occur when newspaper issues have the same combination of LCCN, date, and edition number within Library of Congress's repository. If you're an NDMP awardee, you can learn more about the identifier collisions at the NDMP awardee wiki. Finally, creating and reviewing metadata may allow you to update existing catalog records for newspaper titles, or sometimes even create new title records. After preparing the metadata, next comes the transfer of the metadata and microfilm reels to the vendor for digitization. Most awardees rely on their vendor to scan their originals, create digital images, and create the required NDNP metadata. This includes the TIFF files as well as the derivative JPEG 2000, PDF, and Metz Alto OCR files. Depending on your workflow, you may also rely on the vendor to convert the batch, reel, and issue metadata to the mods Metz structure outlined in the technical specifications. Some awardees even contract with a vendor to create the required NDMP duplicate negative microfilm. The possibilities are endless. Once the material has been digitized and linked with an image's associated metadata, the vendor will validate the data, then verify its integrity. Vendors may also complete special requests concurrent to the NDMP production. For example, you may ask that your vendor purchase the hard drives. For overseas vendors, this eliminates one worldwide trip for the drive, which could prolong its lifespan and save money. Some vendors have the LC Newspaper Viewer installed locally and do a cursory review of the data before it leaves their facilities. They may also allow you to do a similar review. This can allow you to request that portions of the data be reworked before they ship it to you. Again, this saves time and money while reducing wear and tear on your hard drives. Once the vendor digitizes the material, you should review the work to confirm that they are producing content that meets all of the requirements. For NDMP awardees, this is just one step in the larger process of tracking your vendor's performance throughout the grant cycle. There are several key areas to review. Everyone's workflow may be a little different. At the University of South Carolina, we look closely at several items. First, we use the metadata to create a checklist of exceptions. We confirm that the vendor correctly coded, labeled, and structured all of the exceptions in the manner that we requested. After working through exceptions, we check a random sample of the data. Depending on the complexities of the batch and the number of exceptions we have already reviewed, the amount of data we sample can range from 3 to 10% of the total batch content. We also look closely at JPEG 2000 and PDF header information, since it's largely hidden and thus can easily be overlooked during the quality review process. Finally, using the Digital Viewer and Validator tool, we verify all data before submitting the batch to the Library of Congress. 
In addition to quality review, you should track your vendor's performance over time. Many awardees have some kind of software in place to manage the various aspects of the grant. Project management software, publicly and privately accessible wikis, and shared document interfaces seem to be popular approaches to managing awardee and vendor workflows. Whichever tool you choose, you should be able to track the progress of batches, the types of problems that occur with batches over time, and the schedule of deliverables to ensure that you are meeting important deadlines. Depending on the functionality of the tool used to track progress, the software could also act as a central information hub to relay technical information and provide metadata examples to your vendor. While this tool will provide you with a great way to communicate important details to your vendor, most NDMP awardees find that using various modes of communication is the most effective way of tracking their performance and providing and receiving feedback. You might report metadata exceptions, errors, and project changes on a project wiki through email correspondence in a vendor's project management software or during weekly conference calls with your vendor. At South Carolina, our project wiki allows us to document common mistakes and how to resolve these mistakes. It serves as a troubleshooter for future batches that may also have similar errors. Sometimes verbal communication just isn't enough to make your point. This image of a newspaper in the DVV with comments was made by the awardee, in this case me, with the problematic issues highlighted by red font and arrows. Many comments guide the vendor to the exact error so there's no mistaking where a fix needs to be made. Understand that not all vendors reside within the United States or other English-speaking countries. You may have to go the extra mile to express your needs, but generally speaking, vendors do everything in their power to understand and give you the data you asked for. Some of the more difficult specifications surround the metadata structure within the METS framework. If your interest lies in newspaper digitization and you choose a vendor that has not participated in NDMP previously, you might consider graphic instructions on how to correctly encode the structure map for a newspaper issue. They can use these images and your comments to improve their software and educate their project team. In addition to a wiki, a metadata template will help when it's time to correct any metadata mistakes within a batch. For example, since most of the tags for a section label rarely change, we can easily copy and paste the highlighted area into the issue XML file and alter the key tags that are unique for each section. Keeping a store of sorts of the various metadata scenarios like section labels will save you enormous time and reduce the risk of creating invalid data. Documenting the work performed by both you and your vendor will help to understand larger project trends. Noting dates of completion for key aspects of your workflow can be helpful towards this goal. At the end of the first round of NDMP funding, you may be able to use your associated data to determine the average time it took to complete important steps in the workflow, or perhaps identify areas that need improvement. You can also track how accurate your vendor was with the metadata or certain fields of the metadata. Again, you can use these figures to improve future work with the vendor or the second round of NDMP funding. When it comes to fostering a great working relationship with your vendor, good communication is vital. If you're an NDMP awardee, it's important to remember to explain most aspects of the grant and your expectations to your vendor. NDMP specifications can be complicated and complex at times. It is your responsibility to convey these requirements to your vendor. It is important to not assume that third parties will inherently understand certain workflows or rules. The more detailed you can be, the better. Next, even though you schedule important deadlines and communicate those deadlines to the vendor, almost everything will take longer than anticipated. There are many variables that come into play with NDMP. It takes all of those variables in sync to successfully submit a batch of content to the Library of Congress. Not surprisingly then, unforeseen events can occur and delay your progress. Plan for it and know that communicating regularly with your vendor can help mitigate some of the potential delays. Next, it is incredibly important to document conversations and decisions made between you and your vendor. Having such things in writing will hold both of you accountable to any agreements and clarify future areas of confusion. Finally, as an NDMP awardee, you must be able to balance the amount of editing you're willing to do with a batch against the potential delay caused by requesting that your vendor rework a portion of that batch. Whether you're an NDMP awardee or not, learning to edit XML and the RDF header content, revalidating issues, and verifying batches with the DVV can help keep your production moving forward. Be mindful that the more content you correct, the less the vendor learns from their mistakes. Incorporating some of these strategies and tools will help you to foster a productive relationship with your vendor and have an amazing product to share with your users. Finding a happy medium can be a challenge, but take comfort in knowing that almost everyone goes through the same process at some point in their digitization career. The most important thing is this, don't panic.